Champions League. Um, yeah, and as you can see, today we have kind of video feeds. Perhaps. <laughs> I'm saying perhaps because it's not 100% confirmed, but we will see that. So you see um, playing here Strife Crew <laughs> against Neria. Yeah, so I can just give you a short update about the groups. Yeah, and the groups, it's like this is group B, and the players of the group B are actually Strife Crew, Neria, Radu, and Zixo. The first match being between Strife Crew and Neria. And we saw the first game being won from Strife Crow. As you can see, there's kind of an internet <laughs> connection problem, but yeah. So, um, yeah, Strife Crow, Nerea, um, 1 0 for Strife at the very moment. Let me just check whether I see. Okay, so the classes being. Um, from Nerea side, Druid, Warlock, Warrior, and from Strife Crow side, Paladin, Warlock, and Druid. So, what? Yeah. So the first game being won by Strife Cross Paladin. No. Strife Cross. Uh, I'm a little bit um, confused because, yeah, there has been like kind of a lot of production setup going on. And what will happen is, yeah, I mean, you will see it yourself, but actually at the moment it's in the. Yeah, I will, I will just go from here. And what happens is, um, because the video feed seems not to be that easy, um, somebody will actually <laughs> interchange the video feeds during the breaks, but this is also something you will see. It should be a lot of fun. Um, so, here we go. So, this is actually uh, Strife Cross Paladin against Nereus Druid. And usually, Paladin should have, well, kind of a good time, but. It's nearly break even. It should nearly be break even. Let's just check. Okay. Good. Okay. Oh, they are not moving here. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm. So, yeah. As I said today, more 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 production value simply because we uh, there are no not only pictures but we see yeah, Nerea drinking con considering so what's the good play here? What is he actually considering? Pilot the Shredder or one of the Blessing of Kings to actually make the hand less clunky. Also kind of an interesting move to attack the opponent Shredder instead of just going face. Okay. Let's see here, Avenge. Hmm. There is a mysterious challenger for Strive Crew. Yeah, I uh, I will get into the the mood of like um Ah, okay. Mm. Yeah, it, it has been like a little bit stressful to set everything up, so um I have to get into the into the game just right in a second. So, yeah, as I said, it's um Paladin against Druid and um 
I'm also just thinking the first game, what was it? The first game was actually won by Strive Crew and it needed to be with. I'm confused here. Let's see. So Strive Crew playing one of Troid. T1 with. What to do? Troid? In rear one? Hmm. Yeah, that's weird. I will just I will just comment on the matches. I will just comment on the games and um, from the next match on I can give you actually a complete overview. The reason why <laughs> why I have to do it like this is because I cannot I cannot check the Skype as it is at the moment. Okay. So um yeah, we have Mysterious Challenger coming down here. Which is pretty insane also. Like very good value. But on the other hand, we also see like Naria having kind of BGH swipe. I mean, some answers which could be used, but obviously, like on board, he's absolutely behind at the very moment. Mm -hmm. So it will actually be quite difficult for him to come back here. Mm. In comparison to yesterday, we actually have here two players which are actually considering the whole turns, and that obviously makes it. Uh, well, actually, a little bit more easier to commentate on because like more time for us to um, understand and analyze the board state. We see an attack coming down. I guess the plan being perhaps to utilize swipe and BGH, also depending on where the Avenge actually hits on. So, Avenge actually hits probably a target he did want to see. I don't know. Like now, the swipe can actually go down on the Annoyatron. Then a BGH can come down. Yeah, that's a, that's the a right um, ordering. It's the right order. And as you can see, after the swipe, there's also a perfect attack from the Ancient of Lore on the 6 6. So, I would say Nuria just made like a very, very good move for the board clear here. It's really good. I mean, near, nearly board clear, not exactly complete board clear, but really, really close. Really close to board clear here. Okay. But Strife Crew is, well, not, not that much off, so what, what, what could be here the good play? I mean, Blessing of Kings always being nice in this specific situation. Mm. Well, I guess Blessing of Kings to just increase the, the pressure. Um, it's also that BGH is out, so he can just go ahead and play Blessing of Kings. Probably also playing the Noble Sacrifice to force the opponent to actually to use shapeshift. The redemption is not the, the play, it must be the sacrifice. Uh, what? Uh, I mean, there could be also some reasoning behind the redemption, perhaps. He wants to trick his opponent into that he got, um, that he got actually sacrifice online. So that's like an interesting thought. So basically tricking Naria into using this because he thinks it should be Noble Sacrifice but in reality it just isn't. Uh, kind of. So here's the last one which is actually interesting because like if Strife Pro now draws something very good Master being not that bad actually, actually being pretty pretty solid because this will give him the uh, option to actually break through. So actually Consecration for example, Consecration, Master for Battle, hitting the guy, uh, even attacking with the Elephant. So that would be one option, leaving Strife Pro up with like 3 one, one minions and 1-3-1 one, one minion which can actually hit the face. So that would be one option. Oh, what is this? So that actually be <laughs> one option, and um, yeah, that actually being one option, and he's actually going for 
Yeah. That also being definitely possible. Perhaps you should simply sacrifice also your haunted creeper. The swipe is already out, so I would definitely not mind also seeing the attack from the haunted creeper here. It's not mandatory. You can do it or you can also just leave it. I guess you can leave it because also like the the animal can survive what? Uh -huh. Yeah, the sludge belcher draw also being of um, uttermost importance. Every taunt uh, is being of extreme importance here. While well, secret keeper are complete blank, so that's will. Yeah, this will simply lead to strife crew. Probably forfeiting this game. I mean, this was such an important draw here. And the secret keeper is simply an absolute blank. Okay, now you can see the creeper incoming. The creeper actually doing the attack which we actually proposed last turn already. So, yeah, interesting, right? So, Striker is yeah, opting in for the kind of all in plan to, do, to say so. Yeah, but the secret creeper is really doing nothing. So, that's a complete blank. Actually, leaving him in dire strains and this also will close close the matchup for sure. And Iria brought a Strifer actually to a perfect life count, to a perfect life total, or actually himself to a perfect life total also, if you take a look. I mean, Neria, there is actually no card Strife could have top deck to, um, deal n to kill, to, to kill Neria or to actually um, delay the inevitable, which is basically simply die next turn to the full combo. So that's... Yeah, the the BM. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, savage raw obviously also being enough. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> the BM. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 So, Naria trying to tilt strife crow, or I don't I don't exactly know what that was, but okay. I mean, it's reasonable. So that is this. Okay, so we have Strife Cruise Paladin here against Nereus Warlock. And the Warlock, we see it already, is uh, Handlock. 
you know, or daemon lock, hand lock, something like this. I already also see a zombie show. So zombie show actually um, being probably well, there is a good indication that zombie show indicates a pure hand lock. So not even a demon hand lock, but like a pure hand lock. On the other hand, we see Stripecrow with his <laughs> secret paladin uh, with a divine favor, and also with a divine favor which actually has been drawn, which is obviously very very strong against hand lock. Especially if Stripecrow would also run one equality in his paladin, it would make the matchup really incredibly uh, nice. In combination with the Divine Ferrara, really incredibly nice. We see Strife Crow, uh, we see Neria he being second, and second also means your your amount of cards in your hand is actually increased. So it will be actually really interesting to see whether Neria will actually draw too many cards, for example. Yeah, so if he begins to tap here, then this will also lead him to draw a lot of cards, respectively bringing Strife Crow into a position where he can simply draw. Yeah, simply draw. Even now, he could already draw um, four cards. But Strife Crow decides to be greedier. He says, "What four cards for three mana? No way, I'm gonna taking this. I will. I want to get more. I want to get six cards or seven cards later." Um, yeah, I mean, it's reasonable. He has the option to perhaps do so. What should Neria play here? And there are different options. Coin to drag being like the most obvious one, I think. Other than that, perhaps something like an attack and if the event procs on the secret keeper, playing an owl on the secret keeper is another option. So these are actually the two things Neria could do here. The question is which one? Yeah. It's actually pretty close, but I think Maybe calling to the drake could be the better one because it leaves you up also with other options. Other options being potential shadow flame or potential hellfire. Ah, the seal of champions. Yeah, I heard of this like playing the gin and then like the seal of champions. I'm not sure whether I like it. Perhaps I could even say perhaps I don't even like it that much. But um, yeah, I mean that's definitely a possibility. And if you want to try new cards out and also test new cards, play new cards, that's definitely an option you could include into the repertoire. Let me think. Okay, so now the conclusion is enough divine favor value. Four cards, well, it's not bad, is it? I mean, four cards, it's reasonable value. This is a secret keeper growing again. But on the other hand, four cards is also not filling the hand. You already seen an area with like kind of good removals. We see the BGH. Which is actually exactly not enough for the Secret Keeper, but will be the turn after, but um, yeah, I mean the Owl is also helping quite a lot. I would be surprised if you wouldn't see Tapping and Owl coming down here on the Secret Keeper. Uh, well actually it is Demon, it is Demon Handlock. Okay, so here's the competitive spirit. Um, also to be mentioned is like the, the Divine, uh, the, the, um, oh yeah, the Jins. Um, the um, the competitive spirit on the Divine Shield guy is a little bit stronger than on other guys. For the sole reason that the more attack you have, the more important your health count becomes. And Divine Shield is actually even more valuable. So because um, the later the game gets, the more difficult actually it gets. And the stronger the Divine Shield guy gets, the more difficult it gets to get rid of this Divine Shield dude. Because once you attack him... You always lose your minions if the attack strength of the Divine Shield guy is strong enough. So, yeah, it's 
when the jins uh, I'm, I'm really curious like i'm really looking forward to see the jins in action especially if uh, strifer is holding <laughs> what he holds in the hand which is actually a double blessing of kings and is and a seal of champion so that's pretty impressive there is the blessing of kings coming down and probably a noble sacrifice it only makes sense i mean strife pro here with like double blessing of kings i mean what should he oh he opts in to do the to do the bgh stuff it's the it's the right thing to do i think i don't think you should play around bghs but in this case Nerea simply well simply has it in his hand and the mortal coil the hand could be not better we also see a siphon soul here against the genies I really am curious how Nerea actually fit all the things into this deck. When we see Nerea playing Shadow Flame here. We see him playing Hellfarer, Magana, Siphon Soul, Dark Bomb, Belcher. I mean, does that mean that Nerea is potentially even mm. perhaps playing the Reno Jackson hand? What could that be? Did we, or did we already see any doubles? Or didn't we? Because if we didn't, chances could be... Or did we already see double Molten Giants? I don't think so. I think chances could be that... Uh, yeah. That it could be Reno Jackson Warlock. Potentially. That would be also awesome. That would be something. So what is to be said about the Genies? Not much, right? I mean, at the moment they are not doing much. You will see a buff here, and I I guess it will be the pilot ah huh? pilot shredder into seal of champions. Well, I guess so. I mean, the peacekeeper want to get used for something else. So seal of champions here. Uh, Job's done. Um, mm. um, did you understand that? <laughs> I thought like that that was the combo. Hey? Was was the combo not to Whenever you cast a spell on another friend, the minion cast a copy of it. And this one, I... I don't exactly... I mean, one BGH being already out. So... Strider actually was saying he doesn't want to... Uh, this is how it works, right? I mean, you, you can put this on... I mean... I mean, I'm not saying Strifecore well, made it accidentally. Like, I'm pretty sure Strifecore didn't do it accidentally because obviously he's playing this card. Um, uh, he's playing the Genies because of this card. Yeah, so... Um, like, I mean, that's that's the combo. Yeah, that's that's the combo. Genies and and um, this card you just saw. So... Um, so there must have been some reason why Strifeco decided not to give Divine Shield and plus 3 attack. Some reason we don't see. What I will also do, guys, because, um, yeah, this is of course also not a normal <laughs> tournament uh, commentate. Um, I will also take uh, looks in the ch um, Twitch chat um, from time to time, so um, yeah, if you have any, like I will read that from time to time, so if you have, yeah, if you could just write me like what, what I overlooked, that, yeah, so yeah, uh, Molten Giant for free coming down, Siphon Soul, the perfect answer, there is still the Murloc, there is still <laughs> the Peacekeeper, so, so Nira is not completely out of the woods, mm, but well, I mean, it's also not looking that bad. Lee, oh, does it? I mean, there is board clear, but board clear being oh, 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 oh what? Did just uh, it? one more knife and it's lethal. What? What? That, 
that would have been pretty... What? That was freaking close, guys. Well, actually... That was freaking close. Yeah, all to face. Uh, so what, what is Nerea doing now? The only way to prevent it is this Defender of Argus and then Shadow Flaming Defender of... Oh, he got the Demon Caller. Yeah, that's pretty convenient. Right? Or not? So there are two plays. The one play... Well, of course you simply play Void Caller. There was just like a super top deck. You just play Void Caller. Shadow Flame Void Caller. Pretty easy. And... Um, yeah, Void Caller, Shadow Flame, Void Caller, you take a look what comes out. Well, actually, it's not that easy, right? Because then... Okay, so here are the things. Now, option number one, you play Defender of Argus, Shadow Flame, Defender of Argus, and attack with your Molten Giant, the uh, Murloc. If you Shadow Flame the Molten Giant, you would die to the weapon. So you can either Defender of Argus, attack the Murloc, and Shadow Flame Argus. Um, then your Molten Giant will be two health, it's like a 9 to taunt, that's actually even better, I guess. It's like a 9 to taunt. Um, the other play being... Jaraxxus, okay, yeah, that's also a play. Yeah, perhaps it's even better. Perhaps it's even better. Yeah, the Secret Keeper, we know that already. Strive Crow is pretty used to draw the Secret Keeper when... <laughs> when it's not the right time to do so. But, um, yeah, interesting play, right? But probably it's the best one, yeah? I can see it. I can see it. Uh. Well, actually, I think it was a close decision. So we had like two, uh, three, three options, right? The one being Defender and then Shadow Flame Defender, leaving him like with a 9 to Taunt. It's not bad to have 9 to Taunt. Actually, I like this more because I mean, if you just think about it, like the one play um, with a 9 2 taunt, Defender of Argus into Shadow Flame, would have gave uh, Nerea a 9 2 taunt on board, and it's basically nearly nothing which could have happened if you think about it. Like, only Consecration, but that being the only thing. Um, oh, Tyrion, that's pretty good, but not good enough. Um, one turn earlier, it could have potentially made a difference. But now, should probably not be good enough. Yeah, but, like, um, Defender of Argus, if you just talk about it again, there's a 9 to taunt, and the only thing which could actually uh, have killed Nerea would have been a Consecration. Um, with a Void Caller, that was not an option, because if the wrong Demon comes out, he would die. So, yeah, Defender of Argus, and then, after actually the board got cleared, he could then play Jaraxxus next turn, but then being at 15 health. Okay, he decided to play Jaraxxus first, then he actually took into account that he will lose a lot of life, and then knowing that after that he would be able to actually play my Garnus for free and have a potential board clear. I think it's very close between those two options, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. yeah there's nothing which... Draw here. I'm I'm really curious whether, like with this shredder, whether it 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 works like how how we actually like how we wonder that it should work. 